This is Twit. I, I got to go down to San Jose to Savvy Oaks uh, headquarters. Uh, they're a robot maker, and they're doing some really special stuff. And I got to see one of their relay robots in action at an Aloft Hotel, uh, their Silicon Valley location in Newark, California. And I was amazed by how much the staff loved this thing. And I even spoke uh, with the, the fellow who runs the, that specific location, asked him what would happen if we took it away, and he said he'd be devastated. <laughs> Let's so. take a look. Thank you for calling the front desk. This is Alexis. How may I assist you? Hey, Alexis. This is Nathan in room 442. Can I get an iced coffee and a can of Pringles? Sure. I will have that delivered to your room right away. Thanks. Thank you. Right now, a robot is working with a human being to fulfill my order. We're at the Aloft Silicon Valley Hotel, which is one of the first hotels to deploy a robot butler. That robot will be able to get on an elevator and make its way to my room, even dodging obstacles along the way, all by itself. Hello? Hello. Your delivery has arrived. Butler is waiting outside your door for you to pick it up. Alright. Looks like I got my items exactly what I wanted. That robot's name is Botler, and there are actually a handful of these robots deployed in hotels across the country. It's a relay robot built by a company called Savio here in Silicon Valley. Let's go take a look at their headquarters. So when we started Savioke, uh, we asked the question of what's the MVP that we could build in robotics? And delivery is sort of the, the lowest hanging fruit in the space of robotics. You know, moving things from one person to another inside of a building. And so we looked at all the different places where delivery uh, would be useful and we found that there are many, many possible places where this could be helpful. And hotels were one of the obvious uh, markets. So right now, about how many uh, relays are deployed and are they just in hotels or are they in other places as well? We are actually in many properties right now. Uh, we have over, say, let's see, over 50 signed contracts. Um, about half of those are, have already been installed and are in service. Uh, most of those are hotels, but we're also looking at other industries as well. We just announced a partnership with FedEx, actually, and they have seven of our robots, and they're doing deliveries inside of a repair center. And so relays being used in many, many different kinds of applications to move things around. So uh, help me place Savioke in the broader context of robotics and what things look like. Is there kind of a wave of other companies that you all are part of, or do you feel a little bit lonely sometimes, as though you're, you know, only a handful of folks are doing this, or what is that kind of broader scene for companies who are competing against you or complementary? So I think there's a, there's a growing number of robotics companies right now, and that's great because you know this year is really going to be the year of the robot. Um, but I I do know that when we started, um, the space was a lot uh, less full of of other robotics companies. There were uh, robotics for the home, such as Roomba, you know, vacuum cleaners, and there were robotics for industry, um, you know, big industrial robot arms that build cars. And there wasn't much in between, which we thought was the sweet spot. And so right in the middle is where you get the robots for structured environments, semi-structured environments, like hotels or like hospitals, where it's uh, more structured than a home, you know, it's less messy and it's kept clean and neat. And it's, but it's less structured than a factory or a, a warehouse where everything's very rigidly controlled. Lau and her team envision a future where robots assist humans for specific tasks and largely do jobs that can help make us more efficient, rather than simply replacing us in the workforce. Back at the Aloft location in Newark, California, their relay robot has proven indispensable. He's just not a novelty. Um, he's actually helpful to the hotel. Botler allows us to take that 15 minute time standard that was standard in all hotels, bring that down to two and a half minutes, and let us communicate with our guests in a much more timelier manner. Maybe it's because we're in Silicon Valley, but we noticed that people don't seem to find it all that surprising that a robot is cruising around Aloft's hallways alone and on its own. Our ability to find these robots so friendly is no mistake. We want to make sure that Relay was never perceived as something that would cause anxiety or creepiness for the people that are around it. And one of the things that we discovered early on in our design research is that if a, ro if a robot can communicate as well as we can, at least to some degree, then you, you evaporate a lot of that concern. So Relay has a speech bubble where he's always disclosing what he's up to. And actually, he, when he's idle, he says who he is, 
how it can help. And when he's on a task, he says that he's on a delivery. Just that speech bubble saying those few words demystifies what's going on with our robot. Um, and then having the eyes on the robot is to add a layer of empathy because we rely on humans to complete our tasks. So when he's getting into an elevator, we hope that people see this cute robot and want to step aside to let him in because it's really up to everybody to make this thing work out. So we are still kind of really in the early days of robotics as yeah. a whole, right? Even though corporations, you know, manufacturing facilities, they've been using for a long time. Mm -hmm. Where this is all going, you know, there's obviously different ideas like the Rosie idea and the Terminator idea. Um, what do you <laughs> say to people when they ask you, like, is this the beginning of the robot apocalypse? Or are you going to, like, you know, ruin the planet and take all the jobs or that, that kind of doomsday scenario? As long as good people are creating helpful tools to make people's lives better, that's the position we've got. We want to improve people's lives with the products we make, especially with the robots we make. You know, anything can happen, but we're confident that uh, what you see coming out today is an indicator of where we're going. And it's a lot of robots that are assistive devices to extend the capabilities of people. So we firmly believe by setting a good precedent and by seeing what the community is up to, we fundamentally think that things are gonna work out to our benefit in the future. It will mix things up, but we like to think in a really great way. Adrian is here. He's joined us. And uh, is, is the robot here too? The robot is here. Can we meet? Can we meet? The yeah. Robot? Now, is his name Relay or? His name's Relay. Yeah. That's like his, his oh, default oh, name. Oh, here he comes. Oh, oh, hey oh, now. he's coming. <laughs> oh my gosh. So he's running totally on his own, fully this autonomously. This is autonomous. There's Colleen. Yep. Now, if Colleen yeah. gets in the way, he stops or he well, goes around. He, he actually slows down. down and goes around. He's always dynamically planning. So he'll never run over somebody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he really cares about Now people. there's a ramp here, is he gonna be okay? Oh, look at that. Yeah, Just, he, he loves ramps. There's wires. Yeah, he's got that. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, here he comes. He says, right. and, and by the way, the screen says I'm running a delivery. Yep. So that if somebody like Colleen walks into him, she'll know that he's on, on, on his way. <laughs> And we set this up ahead of time that this would be this his, would be the, yeah. the spot where and he would so he he just came back here. Yeah, he just made it back. How does he know where here is? So when we first got in, or when I first got in, uh, made a map of the whole office. So you let him wander around, or do you yeah. have to do that? Actually, when, when he doesn't know where he is, you have to drive him with a joystick. Okay. So just as the first step, actually they okay. they just put up a map that I shared with them. This is um, our so office. This is your office, fully in oh, high resolution. Look, snacks. You see everything there. It says hello. <laughs> yeah. Please remove your items. Yeah, help yourself. Oh, have some, some sun chips. We should probably give some of oh. these to the audience here. Yeah. Since we got so many. We got, we got a lot. I don't, I'm, you know. And then all set, okay. I press the button. Away. So this was, if in the hotel, uh, this would be the experience of, this, of the guest. Yeah. You good? And then exactly. how was your stay? Oh, I'm having a great time at uh, the lo a loft. Yeah. Oh, oh. It's a little happy dance. Oh, look. <laughs> Dude. Oh, my God. Do guests love this? Yeah, they do. Um, Anybody it, intimidated by it? We worked really hard to try to defeat that whole sentiment of intimidation and really trying to make Relay feel almost familiar, almost mm -hmm. pet-like. And so all the design is super intentional really and sweet. the interactions on screen. Who didn't get a snack? Anybody? Oh, you <laughs> should have a snack. You look like a hungry kid. Have one of yeah, and you can fit a lot of snacks in there. Just take yeah. them all. And then yeah, eat. how deep is that container inside? Uh, it's, it's about 14 inches deep. Okay, pretty solid. Um, and you can fit, like... Uh, grocery bags in there and send them more? off. No. Yeah, and there's there's actually this little. Oh, there lid. is more. <laughs> yeah, there's t-shirts, all kinds <laughs> of stuff. Holy cow! Yeah. Wow. There's even some Hot Wheels in here. <laughs> okay. And some stickers. Yeah. So that is cool. So I'm I'm gonna say all set. Go ahead and put that. Put, right. So is it? Uh, it's not food you're delivering. It's usually dry goods or. We can deliver anything. Um, okay. So we we deliver uh, like Starbucks coffee, food, really, and bags and stuff. Yeah. And so we have properties that are. Doing a lot of cool work, sending all kinds of stuff, even like balloons. So when the lid opens yeah, up, they yeah. pop no. out. No. And actually, we've had a couple of robots even deliver a, a wedding ring as part of a ceremony. Oh my God. And that was pretty cool. That's really neat. Yeah. So was was this Savioke's first product? Did you have other things in mind at first? Or? Yeah. Uh, well, our, our team started at Willow Garage, which was this robotics research lab where we looked for years where robots fit in society. And that wound down, and, and seven of us kicked off Savioke. And so we really focused on peer-to-peer -peer delivery and starting with Relay. Um, but we have plans for adding some cool products in the future. Now, there's LiDAR in here, right? Yeah. That's how it maps 
Yeah. You uh, can't have a robot. Yeah, take us without through lasers. top to bottom. Like, what exactly? Oh, oh, oh he's, he's, he's taking yeah. off. He's he going. decided to take so, off. He's a little oh, shy. Oh, he There's, said, oh, <laughs> he's, he rerouted. Yeah. Now, those wires are going to kill him. He's I not going to like that wire. Yeah, he's going to get that. stuck on that one, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there's a there's a touch screen up top that always communicates what <laughs> relay is up to what what he's doing. Yeah. And then there's what else is there in there? Um, so at the bottom we ha we have an active bumper because safety is super important for right. the robot. Right. Um, he's by the way doing a great job. I yeah, don't know why my staff has been throwing obstacles in. Front yeah. Of him. <laughs> he's just going. He just really it, does he's a great job. Super persistent. Go yeah. And going he does back to his charging pad. Yeah. Now, so actually but. here you can see him. So he 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 just planned back to his dock. He's going to look at the dock. And look at it in 3D because he has two 3D depth cameras. And that's um, the strip along the bottom. That's where the cameras are. My Roomba yeah. never does this. It and always. Then he's going to do a little touch here, and then he's charging. <laughs> my Roomba drives me crazy. It stops before it gets to the dock, and then it yeah. dies. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That we was try nice. to avoid that whenever Nicely possible. Nicely executed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, it's got to be. I mean, you said it was like it's like building a car. It's an expensive yeah. device. Do you sell these? How does this work? We rent them. We rent them for about two thousand a month. Oh, that's not on the bad. contract. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's less than a bellboy, right? We really want this robot to get out into the world and start helping people now because we're ready. We feel like there's a lot of opportunity out there, and so this really is the time. What's next? Um, really, just uh, we're we're looking at cross domain now. So we started in hospitality, which was really hard because you have to design robots that are safe around kids, oh, older yeah. adults, yeah. elevators, and just really dynamic environments. Are elevators hard? How does they it, are. How does it get the elevator to go up? So elevators have a controller, and then we also make our own controller that ties into it. And that basically enables Relay to have roughly the same capability as a person does inside the elevator car. So when he gets in the elevator, you just see like the, the floor light just come on. And that's him wirelessly pushing the button. It's really cool. So you, you've got hospitality with the hotels. You're doing logistics, lo logistics with FedEx. Yeah. And what, what, how does that work? Is it a delivery robot? It's awesome. Yeah, it's the same use case, essentially. Um, without the star rating on it. It doesn't um, go down the street, though. No, no. Actually, FedEx offers all these really amazing services, and one of them is actually doing equipment repair. Oh. You'd oh. never expect it, but yeah. it's a really diversified and amazing company. So we have, we have a whole fleet of robots that are serving repair technicians. And actually, this video is an example. This isn't FedEx, but oh, we but shot like a video just parts. to show you what's really going on. Uh. So as a repair technician is re fixing a screen on a broken mm -hmm. laptop, mm -hmm. oh. really shows up right at the moment that they need to swap out the part. Now it seems like there could wow. be huge opportunities in education, in healthcare, in elder care, uh, just all sorts of spots where something like this could be useful. Are you all exploring those sorts of possibilities too? Yeah, like as an example in healthcare, we know that like medium large hospitals yeah. transport over 10,000 items every day. Yeah. And that requires a lot of effort and it requires healthcare workers to move away from patient care to mm -hmm. dealing with logistics. We can fix that problem with our robot. <laughs> now. This isn't my question, but I know the people at home are wondering, does anybody ever like kick the robot or <laughs> knock it over? I mean, I think that it's like, don't, I mean, I would worry about it getting vandalized. Yeah, we worry a lot. We, especially in the beginning, we worried a lot about that because we just didn't know how people would react to the robot. Yeah. It turns out that it's actually been amazing. We've completed over 100,000 fully autonomous deliveries and we've had very early on some minor incidents. Mm -hmm. One time, Somebody did knock over the robot and steal an ice cream sandwich out of it. Oh man, this was that's a cold. fully 3D <laughs> that's printed. So mean. Oh, it was so mean. And it was a, a prototype, so it's hand built. It takes us like oh, a month. It took God. us a month and a half to build that robot. Oh. But uh, yeah, it was in our initial trial. But we got it back up and running the next day, and everything was just it's fine. It's interesting because initially I would think, and maybe in the old days there were a, a, a backlash against robots, like oh, we, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think now we're kind of getting used to the idea that. Hey, yeah. they're going to be our overlords any day now. We should probably be nice to them, <laughs> yeah. right? Do it's you worry that, about that? You know, I, I think it's the other way around, where people are starting to see robots firsthand. Again, it's over 100,000 deliveries. It's not scary. Is it's it? not scary. Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. delightful. Uh, we design robots for people. That's neat. And we want them to be it, happy with them. I'm actually really amazed. I mean, he really is adorable. He's yeah. Got, <laughs> it's got a real person. Hey, Colleen, I was just thinking, I got these Death Star plans. Could you just jam them in there, <laughs> wedge them in there, and send them? I think uh, somebody might want those. Princess Leia. <laughs> Princess Leia. Yeah. Just, uh, Obi-Wan yeah, Kenobi. Just, yeah. <laughs> pretty important message. Help, help me. Just remember, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. There, <laughs> there it is. Help me. It doesn't... Jam it. Push it. There. Yeah. 
Probably don't recommend that at home for you for you other relay <laughs> did you, owners. Did you grow up watching science fiction and oh, robot yeah, science fiction? Of course. So it must be kind of yeah. cool. This is your job. Oh now. yeah, it's a dream come true. <laughs> that is awesome. It's the best job ever. Yeah. That is so awesome. Jason Ransom, he is the. Uh, I'm sorry, that was Jason Ransom on the screen. You're Adrian Canoso. That's right. I'm sorry, I should get your name right. You're standing right next to me. <laughs> Jason's a good name, too. And you're, you're in charge of design of these things. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah, my core discipline is industrial design. That's really... Well, nice job. Thanks. Nice job. <laughs> Do they have to hand-build those, or can you have them built? No, we're, we're in full production now. Oh, neat. Oh, that's really neat.